Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to make uh, a noise and rhythm generator tool um, in Ableton Live. Here it is and here's how it sounds. You can use this to control the frequency. And then we've got resonance for the filter. And we've got an LFO rate, so this is the rate at which the filter moves up and down. And there's the LFO amount, so this is the amount the filter moves up and down. And then there's the gate itself, so at the moment I've got it set to 16, but you can change this to anything you like. And we've got a bit crusher effect here to make it a little more dirty. And an overdrive. And then we've got a stereo width function as well. If you want to download this now, um, just check the description and follow the download link. Uh, once you've unzipped it, uh, put it on your desktop and just drag it in to Ableton Instrument Racks. Uh, I've made my own folder there, which I put it into. Uh, then this means it can be reused. Okay, here's how I actually made it. Uh, let's start with a, an empty MIDI track. And if we add in an instance of Operator, Set the waveform here to white noise and you've basically got white noise which will play whenever you hold down a MIDI note. Next we want to put this through a filter, so turn on the filter there and you can control the frequency. Now you can just leave it at this, play MIDI notes and changing the frequency. Um, but what we're going to do is have this uh, doing this automatically. So we'll just turn the resonance up a little as well. Okay, so we add this to an LFO. Just make sure the filter is turned on there. And we'll set that not to re-trigger, but to sync to your Ableton clock. And we've got the amount here that we can control. So that's the basic uh, kind of LFO noise filter sweepy thing. Um, next, we just need to add um, a kind of rhythmic gate. Now I'm using Autopan for this. And set that to maximum, the amount. Just set the phase to zero. Um, so that instead of uh, moving from left to right, it turns on and off. And we set the shape to square so that it's a cleaner cut on and off as well. And we'll set that to notes so that we can change the rate uh, depending on note divisions. We'll leave that at 16th. And now we've got the basic effect. What I'm going to do now is just map these to some macros. Um, this makes it easier when you're adding other effects afterwards. And it also means you can save this now as an instrument rack, so you can use the whole thing again. So if we right click on operator and select group, we've now got some empty macros that we can map some of these parameters to. Um, so first we'll map the frequency to this one. And we'll map the resonance to this one, and we'll map the LFO rate and the amount, and finally we'll map the auto pan amount. Now you notice here that I can't do anything, that's because I didn't put it inside the instrument rack, so put it in the instrument rack and we can map this now. So we'll map the rate of the auto pan to this macro.
turn these back up again. Okay, we've got those turned back up. What I want to do now is set the minimum and maximum values here on the frequency. Uh, because when you get it very, very low, you're not really going to hear much. Um, so if we go back into map mode and find the filter frequency here, we'll set the minimum to about 400. And we'll just drop the maximum a little bit. And get that to about 8, I'd say. That's about right. Okay, there we go, that's the basic effect. Um, obviously, what I've done here is just use one long MIDI note, uh, but then you can automate like the, the LFO rate, the LFO amount, um, to create sort of a bit of variation. Um, what I'll do now though is just add a few more effects. Um, it's nice to use other effects here as well, you don't necessarily have to use these. Delay can work really nicely. Uh, flanger, phaser, things like that. Um, but these are just a few effects just I've added just to dirty the sound up a little. Um, so we'll start with a redux. Again, drop it inside the instrument rack. Um, we'll turn the down sample to soft. And um, we'll map this to um, this next macro. Next is a saturator. And we'll map the drive to this macro here. What I'm going to do though is set the minimum value of the drive here to zero. Minus 36 is a little quiet. One important thing. Uh, we need a limiter right on the end of this, just to stop things getting out of control. Uh, I'm going to set the ceiling to minus 4 dB, or thereabouts. And you can get some nice kind of vowel sounds uh, if you play around with this uh, bit reduction and drive. And the last thing we're going to add is uh, a frequency shifter. So we can make a kind of makeshift stereo width. All we need to do here really is turn up this amount to just over halfway. Let's just get these volumes down a little. And the dry wet will add the stereo width. So finally, we just map this dry wet to the last macro here. One last thing, which I forgot to do, is to set the offset on the auto pan because it's not quite on the beat. It's not quite how we want it to sound. So if we just play the drums, we can match the offset to fit the timing. That's about right.
now if you want to save this uh, we just rename this well it's scratchy too and all you need to do is drag it into your instrument rack I'm just going to put it in my instruments there and there we go we've got a, an auto noise generator type thing uh, which you can reuse for different projects.